Connections. Welcome back to part two of the Black Panther Connection, the return of ancient African civilizations. African Blacksmiths. History of African Blacksmiths. In ancient Egypt, metal was smelted from the time of the Old Kingdom, 2686 through 2181 BC. In Sub-Saharan Africa, metals for hunting and farming were essential. But in parts of Niger and Mauritania, copper was smelted from the earliest first millennium BC. By AD 1000, metal use was almost universal in Africa. The 3H system of stone use, followed first by bronze and then by iron, does not apply to the history of metals in Africa. Almost everywhere, Iron, copper, bronze, and brass were introduced at virtually the same time. Techniques of African blacksmiths. Lost wax casting. An alternative method of shaping metal is by lost wax casting. This method was used to produce some of the most famous African metalworks, including the Benin brasses, or bronzes, and Asante weights. It is not known exactly how lost wax casting was developed or introduced to Africa, but it was being practiced by West African brass sculptors for several centuries before the arrival of the first Portuguese explorers in the late 15th century. Direct Cast Method It produces a metal model of small organic objects such as seeds or insects. The seed or insect is covered in a thick layer of clay. The clay is then heated so that the organic material is burned away. Molten metal is poured into a cavity through specially prepared ducts. Once cold, the clay cast is then broken off revealing the metal object which is then filed and polished. It would not be possible to discuss the numerous methods that have influenced African metal shaping. Metal has been used to produce objects for almost all areas of life, including trade, warfare, agriculture, worship, ritual, and body ornamentation. Ogon, the God of Iron Ogon, the God of Iron, is one of the pantheon of Orissa traditionally worshipped by the Yoruba of Nigeria. Ogon himself was a user of iron as a blacksmith and a metal worker. African Blacksmiths Ancient African civilizations in and around Egypt who were blacksmiths and metallurgists had knowledge of several different types of metals and metal alloys. For example, meteoric iron, iron, gold, copper, silver, tin, lead, and electrum. African blacksmiths, Benin Brasses. In 1897, a British military force embarked on a mission to capture the city of Benin in southern Nigeria. As a result of this expedition, Benin became famous in the West for its bronzes. In fact, Benin bronzes are made of brass. They were cast using the lost wax process. At one time, brass was rare and expensive. It was a material favored by the divine king, or Oba, and he adorned his palace with it, because it never corrodes or rusts. Brass represents the permanence and continuity of kingship. The Asante Gold Weights Amongst the Akan Asante of Ghana, detailed miniature brass weights were produced by casters using the lost wax process. The weights were used for weighing gold dust, which was once used for all commercial transactions. The Monday Blacksmiths The Monday Blacksmiths hold important positions in society. Blacksmiths are often called upon by the chief for guidance in major decisions regarding the village. The power of the blacksmith is thought to be so great that they are also feared. Monday blacksmith control a force called Nyama. This means that they control all energy and power in the village as well as the makeup and workings of the Monday society. The ability to control such a force is not given to just anyone. 
A single family in the village is designated to produce blacksmiths. The boys from that family are taught the Dalilu, the secret knowledge about the use and nature of Nyama. Nyama is the foundation that nourishes the institution of smithing, so that it may nourish society. It's the simple axiom that knowledge can be powered when properly articulated. One must first possess it, Nyama that is, in substantial amounts and then acquire the knowledge to manipulate and direct it to capitalize on its potential benefits. Acts that are difficult or dangerous like hunting or smelting and forging iron demand a greater responsibility of energy and a higher degree of knowledge be possessed by the actor. Quote, unquote. Rodney Smith, 1998. The Bamana Blacksmiths. The Bamana Society is very similar to the Monday. Bamana Society is also endogamous, so blacksmith families are the only blacksmiths in the village and they hold a very high status due to the extreme power and responsibility that they possess. Bamana Blacksmiths are also experts in divination, amulet making, as well as the practice of medicines due to their extensive knowledge of the spirit of Olga. The Bamana training of young blacksmiths lasts about eight years. After completion of the apprenticeship, the young blacksmith is ready to begin forging tools, weapons, and ritual masks and staffs used for ceremonial purposes. When used actively and sacrificed to, iron staffs continue to gain and radiate power. The power to protect, cure, fight, honor, lead, and repel. The Zulus were notoriously known for their courageousness and fearlessness in war. They were the last to resist European colonialism. The Battle of Isandlwana saw 1,300 British troops killed by Zulus with quote-unquote inferior weapons. The Zulus perfected the art of spear-making, specifically the Asagai, Umkonto in Zulu, which is a pole weapon used for throwing usually a light spear or javelin made of wood and pointed. Join us for part three of the Black Panther Connection, where we explore the leopard societies of ancient Africa. <laughs>